I don't want to make this video. I don't want to make any video. I don't, I don't want to do anything. I just feel, I don't even have words for that. I don't, I feel numb and frustrated, angry, sad, guilty, grief stricken, stupid. I feel kind of stupid. And I, I don't know. I don't I, like I, I don't have words really. So Monday I got a phone call from supposedly the sheriff's department here where I live that I had missed jury duty and there's a warrant for my arrest because I was held in contempt of court. Um, that's great news. I mean, we did just move. And, you know, maybe the post office hadn't updated the jury duty issuance office, uh, the address on file that they had for me. I mean, that's feasible. Whatever. I mean, it seemed logical that an error could have been made in that regard. Why was the mail not forwarded to me? I don't know. You know, stuff happens. Sometimes there's inefficiencies. That kind of, that part made sense. The, uh... The deputies' names all checked out on the whole Google machine that's sitting behind you, you lovely camera, you wonderful people out there. The names checked out. They're actually deputies of the county that I'm in. Okay. And they're telling me that there's a bail amount due and it must be paid before I'm brought onto state grounds. Um, for one reason or another. And at the time, it seemed so plausible, everything they were saying. I was stricken. I was, uh, my intellectual faculties were completely shut down out of fear of incarceration. Spending time away from my kids and wife, not being able to go to work, because I'm in a jail cell for not answering my mail. Apparently not. I mean, obviously, if you're summoned to jury duty, you should reply and go through the process, uh, you know, help out the whole judicial system. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I would think there'd be some kind of process that would lead up to an arrest warrant being issued. Uh, see, looking back, you think, this is so obvious. This is... <laughs> But at the time, you're so struck by fear that you're not thinking about that. The things you do manage to think through, well, the scammers did their homework and they were using legitimate names. So you're like, it must be legit. That's the frustrating thing afterwards. All these articles online, they'll tell you, you know, don't. It's okay to feel shame, but don't don't dwell in the shame. Don't beat yourself up. You're not stupid. And don't respond to anyone who's been a victim of these crimes with, oh, you were stupid, because that's lacking a large amount of empathy. <laughs> what it really is is scams work, and that's why scams exist and keep existing, because they prey upon your human psychology. And so if you fall victim to a scam... It doesn't prove that you're stupid. It proves that you're human. And I keep trying to repeat that to myself. Keep trying to tell myself that you're not stupid. That you're human. That this could happen to anyone, and it does. And you go over the details of what exactly happened and how... You attempted to pay your bail and really just sent someone a large sum of money. Money that you need. <laughs> and it's hard to not feel stupid. I've been nauseous for the last few days since this happened. This was Monday. It's Wednesday right now. My stomach is in knots. I'm sitting right now. It's kind of alleviated a little bit. It's nice. It's like a numbness. I'm just like staring at a wall. How did this happen? How did... How could, uh... 
After everything, I called the sheriff's department because I was unable to re-establish communication with the people who had contacted me, and I had been instructed to wait there so that they could do a mobile escort of me driving myself to the sheriff's office. Anyway, can't establish com uh, connection with them, so I call the sheriff's department directly, and immediately the secretary is like, that's a scam. And I asked them to, would you please run my name for search warrants, for you know, arrest warrants? Because <laughs> I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> And uh, I'm a law-abiding citizen. I've got two little kids. Going to jail kind of messes up, you know, the like being there as a father. And I understand that jail is temporary. You know, uh, anything up to 364 days is considered jail. And after that, it's considered prison. I, I'm aware that I would be in there for a limited amount of time. I get that. But it's really hard to pay my bills when I can't go to work and get paid and keep my family under a roof. And... I have a large amount of agency. Um, the idea of being put in a box scares the living daylights out of me. Um, and I'm sure that played into the whole scam part of it. For sure. Maybe that's the whole thing. <laughs> we scare them into being stupid. You're not stupid. I know. Blah. Anyway, call the sheriff's office. And they're like, don't worry, bro. It's just a scam. So we go immediately to our bank and I report the charges on the account as fraudulent. The fraud department reassures us in the next few business days, those will be returned to the account. I have between 50 and 100% faith that that's true. Um, I'm nervous because all systems I've worked in many different industries and systems have inefficiencies. And when someone tells you something's gonna happen, it, it'll probably happen. And I may need to call the fraud department of that bank a few times over the next one to 30 to 90 business days, who knows? I may need to call them a few times and follow up on that. But I'm pretty sure we'll get that money back just through the bank. But that part of my brain that repeatedly tells me I'm a fool, it also tells me that the bank has zero liabilities when it comes to returning that money. It also says like, hey, <laughs> maybe they uh, can't do anything and they won't return it. Uh, <sighs> With thoughts like that, the numbness kind of is helpful actually. So anyway, the bank is updated. We would go back to where we did the money transfer and let them know, hey, this was a fraudulent charge. The lady behind the counter was hilarious. She was like, yeah, you guys are really being suspicious. I already flagged that. <laughs> God bless you, lady behind the counter there. You may have saved our bacon. Who knows? Hopefully that works. Um, the money transfer service, their fraud department, is incredibly inept. The I filled out a report there, and there's a specific uh, field you have to fill out that relates to their payment cards. And they're like, you didn't put in a number for the payment card you were using. <laughs> I didn't buy a payment card. I scanned a QR code and sent money like a like a victim of a scam attempt would. Mm. And um, this video is very hard to film because my pride is eating me alive and it hurts. But that's also a reason I want to do it, the video. Because the fact that it was a successful scam proves my humanity. I'm not stupid, I'm human. In a way, that will be helpful. 
but what I really need is a therapist. <laughs> and given those two kids I've got and a marriage I'm maintaining and a job I go to, I don't know where I'll fit in the time for therapy. That sounds like a very unhealthy <laughs> way to handle your mental health. Um, if I could make a recommendation to anyone who's made it this far in this boring and incredibly shameful video, uh, please go to therapy. Therapists can do some amazing things. It can be very good for you. It can be a very helpful service. Go to it if you need it. Um, I've filled out a fraud report with the FTC. That's the Federal Trade Commission. They are involved with different fraud charges and whatnot. Um, so we'll see how that goes. And I'm working on a police report still. That's a whole loop swoop in a pole. Um, that'll get finished. Um, I'm nervous to log into my bank account. Not because you'll see these charges on there, which I'm told will be reversed, but because every time I log in from here on out, what if they're never reversed? And I know maybe I'm being silly. Maybe I'm not being an adult or not fulfilling my duty as the financial officer of this family. <laughs> but as the financial officer of this family, I also sent a complete stranger thousands of dollars. And uh, I'm not handling it very well. I'm having trouble keeping food down because of that nausea thing. And... My sleep sucks. It's only been two days. I feel like if I were to talk to my grandpa about something like this, my grandpa would be very empathetic. He was a great man. But I hear John Wayne in my head be like, <clears throat> get over it, boy. <laughs> Time to move on, solve the problems, you know, what have you. Time to just... Man up. I don't know what to do. I don't know. I'm trying to do my due diligence. Report it to the proper channels. Go about getting the money back. Uh, never answering the phone again. <laughs> no. Um, I'm trying to do the right things. And I will log into my bank account. I'm going to have to pay bills in the near future. Uh... Like I said at the beginning of the video, I don't want to make this video. I don't want to make any video. I don't have any motivation to do anything. I, I've been going to work and I'm, I'm productive. I mean, I'm doing my job, but it's kind of just a blank stare <laughs> that I'm producing at everything. Uh, I've had opportunities to work out and I can't. <laughs> I, I do like three push-ups. I do one pull-up and I'm just I'm not exhausted or spent or sore. I just don't have any desire to work out. I screamed into a pillow today. That was helpful, I guess. Kind of. Not really. And all that energy that was spent screaming into a pillow would have been great workout fuel. But before, after, during, I didn't... If I could just go have like a, a heavy deadlift session and then a sprinting one mile, maybe I'd feel better. Maybe go for like a 5K run, you know, clear your head. When I'm standing, I just want to sit. When I sit, I want to stand. And when I sat down just before this, I was like, you know what? Load up the program you're writing. I'm, you're going to do a little coding. It's one of my favorite things in the whole world. It's a passion project. It's so, it's fun. I have a good time doing that. 
and I just stare at lines of code. I know exactly what I need to do next. I know exactly what I need to build, the next stage of this project. I know what I need to do. I know what I normally would want to do, and I just can't. I just don't. I just feel so frustrated, so defeated. I got some really good news on Tuesday. I will make a new video for that because it's outside the scope of this. And it felt good at the time. And now I think about it and I don't feel good about the good news on Tuesday. My kids will be home soon. My wife will come home from work. I finished my work day. Hey, and I actually did my work, okay? So if anyone is watching who I currently work with, don't worry. The TPS reports will be filled out. But everyone's coming home soon. I'm excited to see them. I love them. And they always brighten my day. That is God's honest truth. But I, I'm not excited to have to put out that energy. I don't have that energy to be a father right now, to be a husband. I'm, I'm just really confused. <laughs> I'm, I'm ashamed. Did I mention frustrated? I'm frustrated. I'm scared. How did they get my number and my old address? How, is any other part of my life in jeopardy of any kind? I'm not going to get shot in the streets or something. But if they can find where I live or where I used to live. or Like I said, I got kids. I highly doubt they're in this area. But I don't know. And what other parts of my digital life are an open book to be accessed. They don't have access to the bank account. No, I'm just confused. I just don't know what to do. But I've taken the proper measures to uh, combat this and it could turn into a really fun uh, cyber security or phishing presentation later. You know, how to deal with it. Hang up the phone. Uh, uh, how to deal with these things. And how to do it properly. I'm sure in the future, good things will come of this. There are lessons to learn. Absolutely. But right now, I just feel in a haze. Just a, a gray haze of... Bleh. <laughs> And I'm hoping it passes soon. I'm hoping a few nights of, of sleep, whatever sleep I get, I hope I can go on a run and put this behind me physically. I, I hope the money is returned. We'll see. But I needed to put this video out and make an update. One, I need to talk about it. And I'll look into some kind of professional services for that so that you lovely folks don't have to deal with uh, whining on camera. <laughs> but I also think this is a good insight to whomever finds it valuable. What is going through the head of someone who's been in a scam situation? Um, I guess, praise God, I'm not going to jail. That's a plus. Um, thankfully there are systems in place to recoup any losses or at least attempt to that's a plus it's good to be taught that um, we rely quite a bit on our money and we get really nervous about it but in a situation where you should be really nervous about it like this it, it teaches you that your everyday worries about it are kind of silly so that's, that's a nice little thing there. I guess I'm kind of finishing off with a gratitude list. I'm still alive. We still have food.
paychecks will be rolling in and this will get sorted out. I wish I could make this numbness go away. And I, there was like a, a checklist. I was like, right now you should be feeling grief uh, and then you're gonna feel anger and uh, then depression. You know, you're gonna go through the five stages. Uh, <laughs> like, can we just check those off? Could we get through this like stomach tightening, heart wrenching stress feeling? The other day I was in a work meeting, my hands were shaking for nothing. Like, ugh. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, have a great day. Wish me luck. And uh, don't be afraid to hang up on people and make some phone calls to verify their claims. Because no matter what they're telling you, uh, you can't be arrested for bad phone reception. Um, so if someone calls and is like, you're definitely under arrest, you have to pay some money, and you hang up and you call the local authorities and verify that's fake, uh, even if it was real, uh, they're just going to be happy you called them back. So... <laughs> okay. This kind of derailed my entire week. <laughs> so, hopefully something a little more positive will come out later. This anyway, I'm dragging this on. Have a great day. And good luck out there. Stay safe.